Hello everyone, welcome back to a short video. Um, this is kind of off track from what I usually do, but um, it would appear that mods are under attack again in um, GTA 5 this time. Uh, so I feel like since I do do a channel mainly dedicated to modern, that I should comment on it because at the end of the day, um, it does affect modern community as a whole. And I just thought that I would weigh in with uh, my opinion on the whole thing. So I'm using a PC Gamer article here, uh, which seems to sum it up nicely. Um, but so for anyone who doesn't know GTA 5 and GTA 4 both use a modding tool called Open 4 or Open IV. I'm sorry, I, I don't know which one it is. I think it's Open 4. Um, and this mod is like fundamental in creating a lot of mods. It's kind of like the um, the script extender for Skyrim mods on PC. Uh, a lot of mods use it as like their main foundation. So. Um, the creators of this tool, Open4, received a cease and desist letter from Take Two, which is the parent company of Rockstar. And basically, just told them that they have to stop um, what they're doing and take the tool down. Um, so, obviously, that kills any mods that use that, um, that tool <coughs> as their foundation. So, it just says. Yeah, uh, May nineteenth, two thousand seventeen. The creators of the Open Four mod received an email from the legal counsel of Take Two Interactive in the USA, um, and the email just told them that they had to stop immediately any further work or distribution of Open Four on um, Liberty City and GTA Five. So basically, what they're saying there is you're in violation of a copyright thing and we're telling you to stop like before we take legal action now whether mods are in this gray area where at the end of the day if you really wanted to get down to the nitty-gritty of it okay they are altering um a video game that was made by rockstar but the work is usually uh completely original work that doesn't violate anyone's copyright um, rights or anything like that but take to obviously feel like they're in the right to stop people modifying their game um, so the people who made open 4 said they didn't feel like they were violating any laws so they asked uh, rocks that uh, take two to provide them with more de detailed information and on June 5th, that's two weeks of silence, uh, they got a cease and desist letter from the lawyer's company, uh, the legal representatives for Take-Two, which are in Russia, and then um, both electronic and paper form to the employer's address, and the cease and desist accuses the creators of Open4 um, uh, in violation of Russian laws, so obviously they've done it from Russia, as opposed to the UK or the US where Rockstar and Take Two do have um, headquarters. Whether that gives them more right and not up on copyright laws, they're extremely complex. Um, but I don't know if because it's from Russia that they get more sway um, because of maybe the laws in Russia are a bit more uh, tighter than they are. In the, the UK or the US. So he just the guy says. After many heavy thoughts. We decided to agree with the claims. Um, and it was a very hard decision. And they've stopped doing the open for. Obviously that's because. They don't want to uh, risk. Getting taken to court and sued. As far as I know. They don't make any money. No direct money from open for. So they're not really. In violation. But at the end of the day. They don't want to have to waste time and money in court because, you know, obviously Take Two is a very wealthy company and they could afford lawyers which could just, you know, turn you inside out. 
and you wouldn't really stand much of a chance. So this whole thing is obviously made even more um, worse by the fact that Bethesda recently announced paid mods. And you might be wondering, well, what's this got to do with Bethesda's paid mods? Uh, basically, this is kind of a war on modern. And both in Bethesda's case and in Rockstar's or Take-2's, which I'll mention in a moment, it essentially comes down to microtransactions. Obviously, Bethesda are trying to make money from paid mods now so that they are um, using like a microtransaction system, which is Bethesda credits, I think they're called, to actually purchase paid mods and anyone who hasn't played GTA Online um, you get these things called char cards, which are basically just faux credit cards that you use in the game, so it gives you money. So you buy, like, I don't know the exact numbers, but say $10,000 um, worth of GTA Online money, which you'd use to buy cars and weapons and clothes and stuff like that. So obviously with modern um, prevalent, the people don't necessarily feel the need to have to use the microtransaction system, whether it's the shark cards on GTA 5 or the uh, Bethesda credits on the, um, the Bethesda Creation Studio or Creation Suite, whatever it was called, which um, would affect Fallout 4 and Skyrim. So, in my opinion, what um, Take-Two are trying to do is to take away the choice that people have in the game to use free mods and kind of force them to only be able to buy vehicles and weapons and stuff like that. So one of the things I do need to mention at this point is Open Fort was primarily just used for the single player in GTA. It doesn't, uh, well, it's not supposed to mod for the online game. I think there's actually a warner message built into the uh, Open Fort tool which tells you that you can't mod the online game or it warns you if you're going to change some element which could affect the the online game so it's basically the single player mod it's got nothing to do with gta online i would kind of understand um if these mods were online mods because at the end of the day Rockstar did something very good in the fact that they gave you an absolutely superb single player for GTA 5. I can't, the game is magnificent. It's an amazing game. Uh, and then they did the online stuff completely separate. It is built into the game and you can switch to the online through the single player character menu. But there was no elements in the single player. There were no missions that said you need a friend to play this mission or you have to, you know... You have to be in co-op mode to do this side mission or anything like that, which Ubisoft does a lot, and I hate when they, did, they ruin the last Splinter Cell game, in my opinion, by putting all that multiplayer crap into the single player. And I mentioned it on my um, Watch Dogs 2 review as well. Um, so, yeah, I can't argue with... The online side of GTA because they did the completely separate from the single player it didn't take away from the single player or anything like that so whatever they want to do with the online system that's up to them obviously it's their their game but also I feel they did right by the single player um, people out there by giving you a fully fledged superb single player game but um, Take-Two did release a short statement which I'll read for you now. It just says, Take Two's actions were not specifically targeting single player mods. Unfortunately, Open 4 enables recent malicious mods that allow harassment of players. So, obviously, playing on the uh, harassment side of things there to try and give their argument more um, credit and interfere with the GTA online experience for everybody. We're working, we, we are working to figure out how we can continue to support the creativity of the community without negatively impacting our players. Um, it would seem to me that it would be quite easy for Take-Two to um, stop those any online stuff. I know people have had um, credits or the, the online currency gifted to them by people who have managed to, you know, uh, manipulate the game to get as much money as they want and 
Rockstar have taken that money away from people. They've been able to detect uh, whether they earn that money legitimately in the game or not. So it would seem very easy that they could stop and ban players who were using mods and go to the modern community websites and if there's a mod that specifically says that it it's used to um break the online um you know code of conduct or whatever you could ask them to take those mods down and not support them and i'm pretty certain that the uh the third party mod sites would comply with that but they haven't done that obviously they've taken away the major tool and what they've essentially done is said that you know this open four tool cannot be used anymore to cease and desist so thereby anything that uses the open four uh, tool as their foundation for the mods have also now got to go so it's not like they've targeted specific mods and say this is interfering with the online please take it down they've done it in a way where they pull out the bottom card of the um, tower of cards and it all comes crum crumbling down um obviously this is very concerning because although we don't necessarily get gta 5 mods on console um it doesn't mean that we won't get them for red dead redemption 2 obviously the uh, bethes that have proved that you can do modern on a console very well so there's no reason why a company like rockstar couldn't have a similar system on red dead redemption 2 either for the xbox one or the xbox one x or the ps4 pro or anything like that so it's it's really worrying that they're trying to kill the modern scene because that kind of you know takes away from the game for us i've said in my previous video where i discussed bethesda's paid mods that i probably wouldn't still be playing skyrim to the extent i'm playing it now if it wasn't for mods and obviously i wouldn't have a youtube channel about mods if the mods weren't there because uh, i'm not a pc gamer I, I like to play on a console and so you know the idea of now that there's this precedent getting set by bethesda and take two the the essentially trying to kill the modern scene as it is now so that they can continue to push their microtransactions either through the Bethesda the credits or the shark cards on gta 5 so it is an attack on mod and modern scene in general i would say it goes and shoots themselves in the foot because both games are getting on now in terms of age and it's mods that keeps them fresh and relevant as i said in my previous video the that's what keeps these games in the spotlight why people keep buying them why keep people keep discussing them online and giving that free advertisement to people who are like you know what this game's been getting spoke about for the last few years i'm gonna have to go and see what it's all about and stuff like that um so it's kind of worrying that if they do kind of succeed in this um war on free modern that are only um choice for mods is microtransactions and it's it's not good at all to my to in my opinion it is a blatant a blatant um attempt to force people to rely on the microtransaction system more and it's not a good thing it's something that we, we really can't allow we need to try and stop this before it gets out of hand and the modern scene essentially does die um you know these mothers don't get money for their work and if they do they don't get a lot of money maybe people donate to them on the paypal if they've got something like that but they're not making a massive amount of money to do this because they like being creative and they like to make people's games better and if it's not going to take much um to kind of drive those people away from all the hard work they put in so it's it's something that we need to be vocal about it's something that we need to really point our finger at these companies and say we know what you're doing and we're not happy about it and we will not support you if you continue this any further the best way to get these people to understand is to vote with our wallets but at the end of the day, if you're looking at games like The Elder Scrolls or Fallout or GTA 5, 
or Red Dead Redemption. They are very good games. They the superb games. It's why people want to mod them and keep them keep them fresh and keep them going. So it'd be very difficult to say to people, don't buy Red Dead Redemption Two. Uh, let's make sure Rockstar understand um, what's going on here because people will buy it because it's probably going to be an excellent game and it's the same with any future Fallout games or Bethesda, uh, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls games. People are going to want to play them. They'll be dying to play them. It's years between each iteration of these things. So, But we do need to make a stance and make sure that we tell companies like this that you know as i've said we're not going to stand for it and that way we can curb any other company that's thinking about doing this we can stop them from even considering it because we will attack you in your wallet and we will take your profits away from you it's the only thing you seem to care about is profits but you know it, it is a difficult situation and the only thing we can do really is be vocal about it and make sure that people are aware of what's going on and um you know just hopefully we can we can just stop all this silliness from these parent companies obviously take two is the parent company of rockstar and zenimax is the parent company of bethesda and it's them that are doing this i don't believe that the people who make the game like rockstar studios or bethesda think like this i, I it is the parent companies that are doing it and we've just we've just got to make sure that they know that we won't stand for it. Uh, thanks for listening to me uh, rant, anyway, guys. Like I said, it is something that is very important to me. Not just because I do the YouTube channel. You know, it's I just like to point out that I don't make any money from this. So it's not like I'm worried about my livelihood and anything like that. I've got a full time job. I'm fine. I just love modern in general, and I think it's a superb thing for games. And I love the fact that it's coming to consoles now. And so we just need to make sure that they're not going to try and rebrand it as some, you know, pseudo microtransaction bullshit. But uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to leave it there. See you next time.